Obamba is done for the season. Uh, he is out at least four weeks and then will be reevaluated. At that point, the season's over. The Lakers' last game is April 9th. So even if he was ready to come back, uh, he wouldn't be able to come back for the playoffs. So that gives us four weeks without a backup center. Uh, we do have, you know, Wayne and Gabriel, but he's undersized. He's more of like a four, small ball five than like a traditional backup center, especially against some of these teams that we have coming up. Would be nice to get some size. Uh, you know, Mo Bamba, even if he does come back, uh, come playoff time, he's still a very raw young talent, right? The Lakers got him as a guy to like develop and build and grow over the next several years. Uh, to be that guy alongside Anthony Davis or, you know, maybe even potentially replace Anthony Davis at some point. And he does have his positives, right? 40% from three, has a nice looking shot for a big man, a great shot blocker, but is still a little raw, right? Needs to, to learn a little uh, restraint and control at times on the defensive end, especially. But that'll come, right? Still very young. Uh, we will very likely keep him uh, beyond this season. Uh, we do have him under contract next year, but it is uh, non-guaranteed. Regardless, I don't see him going anywhere. Worst case, they probably, uh, you know, just restructure his deal or something if that works out. So we could use a center. Now, obviously, Hassan Whiteside, I've been preaching. I really think he would be a solid addition. Uh, he's a guy even just last year was in limited time. Limited minutes was an 8-8-2 eight, eight guy, two blocks being. Um, and like 17 minutes per game. That is huge. Like imagine if we had a guy off the bench that was giving us eight, eight and two blocks per game on like 15 minutes of play time. I mean, this is literally a double, double guy. If you give him 20 minutes a game, that's insane, right? Like his per 30 is like, what is it? Like 14 and 14 or something like that. So imagine what that would do to this Lakers team. Uh, and you have him off the bench, you could slot him alongside Anthony Davis. I think that that would be huge. I think that that would be uh, beneficial. But there's problems with Hassan, right? He has just his mental, for one, right? He thinks he's Anthony Davis, but in reality, he's not. Um, his problem is not talent. His problem is he's just a, a locker room issue. But we've seen a lot of players over the course of history that, um, you know, they're out the league get that get that big piece of humble pie and then all of a sudden they come back and they they're just completely different right they realize like okay I need to change it's me I need to change the way that I am so maybe Hassan could be one of those people that uh that follows in that suit I mean look at like Carmelo Anthony for example he's a great example he was the guy that believed he was still a star and he wasn't and it took him having to to be out the year out, out the league for a couple of years for him to go okay fine I want to come back I want to play and he accepted the role and thrived, right? I mean, he was great for Borland. Uh, so I could see something like that with Hassan. The other route is, you know, DeMarcus Cousins, uh, familiar with AD, familiar with the Lakers, give you a, a sizable body down low, a guy that could stretch the floor. Not great laterally defensively, right? But a guy that could just, you know, be the be the guy to kind of wear down the Joker, you know, be physical with him. Uh, you know, some of these some of these bigger centers in the league. Uh, he he could be really helpful and beneficial for him. Uh, again, Anthony Davis is going to be playing 38 minutes a game, uh, but to have that guy that come in, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, 15 minutes, and kind of slot in and kind of get you know expel Anthony Davis, that would be solid, right? Cousins just wants to play, but again, he has his problems. Injury history is a big one, right? The guy can't stay healthy. Uh, secondly, his mental, right? Like, he's a guy that just technicals, he loves to get, just blowing up, getting upset, gets in his, like, uh, moods, I guess, uh, and that becomes a real problem. It becomes real negative. I mean, even Bob Myers, there is a entire interview where Bob Myers talks about, like, Cousins asked me, why can't I get a job? Like, why don't teams want, want me? He's like, I still got a lot left. I had a good year last year. And they were like, because they're afraid of what you're going to do. They're afraid of the way you're going to behave. Again, not necessarily a talent issue, but it's more so of a like, you need to get out your mental. So who could we get that would be a nice addition? Well, what about Nerlens Noel? Now, yes, Nerlens Noel, he is signed with the uh, Brooklyn Nets currently, but he is on a 10-day contract. Um, he is... The, he is a guy that 
still 28 years old, 6'10 in height, uh, decent shot blocker, not really a stretch big. He's not a guy that's going to be able to stretch the floor and knock it down, but kind of in the, the same Hassan Whiteside mode, mold where he could come in and uh, you know, provide a couple blocks, you know, give you a block or two a game, uh, give you, you know, a handful of points, handful of rebounds, something like that. I could see him kind of playing that role. Um, so far, uh, like I said, with Brooklyn, he's played two games, uh, which is not a very big sample size, but he's played 18 minutes per game and he started one of them. Uh, and he's not really, he's rebounding has been good. Um, he has half a block, so he has four and a half rebounds, one and a half assists and half a block, but he's only putting up one point per game. Now, granted, it's only a two game sample size, kind of hard to tell, but he hasn't really played many games this year, period. Right, so he had in his 14 games with Detroit, he played 11 minutes and gave them two points, two rebounds, or just under, I guess, two and a half rebounds. Uh, you know, a block, a steal, and an assist. So again, not a guy that jumps out the page. Um, Hassan Whiteside, like I said, did more in less time. Uh, but like when you start looking at like some of like the the earlier years, some of the better numbers. He's basically like an eight and six guy, you know, seven and six guy is what he is in limited minutes. But he's a guy that doesn't need the ball, a guy that's not going to demand the ball, a guy that can play some defense, uh, be be a, a switchable guy. Um, he's a guy that I just I think has the youth still at twenty eight. Um, and concerns are, you know, the whole clutch thing, right? He went through a clutch lawsuit, uh, so how would that? pertain to his him potentially going to the Lakers um I don't think it will really matter I mean look business is business at the end of the day LeBron just wants to win if he can come in and help them win I don't think he cares from New Orleans Noel side LeBron isn't like yes he's part of clutch but the Lakers aren't clutch right like yes like if LeBron want my point is if LeBron thinks that he could help them win I absolutely think he would say all right fine bring him in Right, because we we need the goal is to win. The goal is to get in the playoffs and win, and we are making a real case for that. And but need a, a solid backup. We really do. Now, personally, again, I kind of lean towards us on white side more. I think these two guys are kind of in the same mold. I just think um, Hassan Whiteside gives you more with less again, and he's thirty three, so he's not like ancient, right? But he hasn't played much this year, right? He hasn't played at all this year. Um, same thing with DeMarcus Cousins. He hasn't played at all this year. Now, Nerlens Noel, at least he's played some games, got some games under his belt. He's going to write out this 10-day contract with the Nets. Maybe they give him another 10-day, which if that happens, then I think the Lakers should move on and look elsewhere. But, I mean, if you know, if, if they get through their 10-day... Um, I, if you're the Lakers, I think, you know, give them a chance. Say, hey, you know, you're doing, you, when you're 10 days up with the Nets, how do you feel about coming to Lakers? How do you feel about coming in and, and slotting in? You know, we got like 15 minutes a game for you to play. You know, again, a guy that you could play next to AD, you could uh, bring him back up, you could do whatever. Um, guy that's just, again, because when it comes to the Lakers, they need a guy that's not going to demand the ball, that's not going to be a locker room problem, and that'll play their role. And I think Nerlens Noel will do all of those things. I think he's a guy that will play his role. I think he's a guy that will, you know, not demand the ball, and I don't think he'll be a locker room issue. So if he is all those things, like that's, that's all three of those things are things that you can't say about anyone else, right? Like DeMarcus Cousins, you can't say all three of those things for Hassan Whiteside, you can't say all three of those things for. Even guys like Dwight Howard that people want to come back, which that I want the Lakers stay as far away from him as possible. But even him, you can't say all those things for. Like, there's not really a center. I mean, Ibaka, but I would rather have Nerlens Noel than, than Ibaka, personally. I think he's just younger. He's going to be able to give you more. Uh, he's not the floor spacer, but, you know, the Lakers need interior defense. The problem that the Lakers have had all year is when Anthony Davis goes out, we're atrocious defensively, right? So, you know, again, Mo Bamba is a great help defender, shot blocker, but he's not good individually defensively, right? He has his struggles. He has his issues. Where Nerlens Noel, 
he's good. I think he'll be able to provide a lot more of that. Him and Anthony Davis have have you know that uh, Kentucky connection. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that I think uh, could make sense with getting Nerlens Noel and just his youth. If it, if he works out and he's great for you, you could re-sign him and keep him you know for several seasons if you want. You know he's a guy that 28 years old like. You know, he's a guy that you could have for the next four or five years, and he'd still only be 32, 33. So, you know, like, he's a guy that I think could be a very good, solid backup for the Lakers for, you know, the foreseeable future. Be your third big, second big. Because even, like, Mo Bamba, with Mo Bamba's ability to stretch the floor, you could play him alongside Mo Bamba. Like, you could run twin tower sets if you want. You know, go Bamba and Noel or AD and Noel. I think however you slice it, I think I think it could work. I think it's uh I think it's something that I would welcome. Um I still again kind of lean towards the Son White side for like the short term. Like if it's just this year, uh I just think again he gives you more and less. In the same amount of playing time, he's literally doubled Noel's stats in every way. Uh so it's like would you rather like he's basically like a poor man's white side basically what he boils down to because his numbers are literally half of what Hassan's are uh in the same amount of time when you break it down so anyway as always this is a discussion so I pass the question on to you Liminary thoughts and opinions down in the comments below what do you think yes go get Nolan's Noel no uh you know go get a white side or cousins or whomever uh do you think you know can we even afford to wait because that's the thing you'd have to wait till because they did it what last Monday so that means this Monday would be a week, and then you got three more days. You're talking Thursday, talking this coming Thursday, um, that that they could that they could go and get uh, New Orleans Noel. So if you're the Lakers, are you willing to, to wait a week, or should you get somebody now? I don't know. Uh, love to hear your thoughts and opinions. So let me know down in the comments below.